Welcome back to Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain a crime, drama, mystery film from 2017, titled, Murder on the Orient Express. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. Hercules Poirot is a well-known detective in 1934 who has a reputation for cracking every case that comes his way. He also has a perfectionist streak and wants everything to be in order, even if it's only his eggs for breakfast. He plans to take a holiday and travel to Istanbul after years of working on various cases. Mary Debenham, a lady he meets on the ship, is amazed by his abilities and attention to detail, which have captivated everyone. After some time, Poirot overhears Mary telling Dr. Arbuthnet, another passenger, that when all is finished, nobody will harm them, but his entrance ends their conversation. Poirot visits several of his pals in Istanbul after arrival, including his favorite chief Muhammad and a merchant named Book. While having drinks with Book, a British consular official approaches Poirot and informs him that he must go to London in order to solve a case. He tells Book that he will be riding on the same train as him after getting the message. The Princess Dragomirov, the industrialist Mr. Ratchet and his attendants Mr. Masterman and Mr. McQueen, are among the other passengers who are apprised of Poirot's travel plans. Mr. Ratchet questions McQueen about a threatening letter he has received as the train departs Istanbul, but he has no clue who may have sent it. He then makes an attempt to speak with Mrs. Hubbard, but she is not at all amused. When Poirot overhears them quarrel and inquires as to why, Mrs. Hubbard satisfies him by stating that nothing occurred. The following day, Poirot meets Book for lunch and hears about the other passengers. Mr. Ratchet approaches Poirot after everyone has left the dining area and extends an invitation for dessert. Ratchet informs him about his new company selling antiques as he accepts the offer. He also mentions that he has created a few enemies who have been threatening him. He claims to have sold several carpets in Milan, but the customers were dissatisfied with the quality and are now suing for a refund. He offers Poirot a sizable sum of money in exchange for watching his back, but he refuses the offer. Ratchet again attempts to threaten him with a pistol after noticing his lack of interest, but he is not at all scared and explains that since he sells false goods, he deserves the penalties. Poirot notices a commotion in Ratchet's cabin during the night and discovers a woman departing quickly while wearing a red robe. Before he can do anything, the train is slammed by an avalanche during the storms and derails. Poirot finds his belongings ruined, along with the other passengers, and is heartbroken to discover the shattered photograph of his longtime love Catherine. Passengers get anxious as the train becomes stalled and inquire about the safety procedures, but Book tells them that a rescue crew would be sent for them if they are unable to make it to the next station in time. As they all converse, a missionary named Pilar Estravados explains they cannot control whether they will arrive at their objective or not. Mr. Masterman knocks on Mr. Ratchet's cabin in the morning but gets no answer. Soon after, Mr. Poirot appears from the next cabin, and the guards are called to open the doors. When they enter, they are horrified to discover his lifeless body there. They quickly summon Dr. Arbuthnet, who confirms that Ratchet was killed by being stabbed. He claims to have passed away between midnight and two in the afternoon, but the guard tells him that although he was on duty, he did not see anybody leave or enter his compartment. In order to alert the police, Book requests that he solve the case. Poirot first declines the case, claiming he is on vacation, but he eventually persuades him by warning that if he does not become involved, an innocent person may be held accountable for a crime they did not commit. He discloses the death to everyone on the train and offers to crack the case. As the inquiry gets underway, Mr. McQueen is first questioned regarding his friendship with Mr. Ratchet. He says he has been his secretary for about a year and takes care of the majority of his business. Additionally, he claims Ratchet was unpleasant and had many adversaries who had been writing him threatening letters. After interviewing him, Poirot looks over the body and discovers that someone had drugged him, which is why he was unable to fight for his life despite having a pistol to defend himself. While the rescue team is en route to assist the train, he also gathers some further evidence from his room, including a napkin with the letter H written on it. 
While looking at the letters found in his room, Poirot finds a note saying, strong blood is on his hands, and he will die. Although he is unable to solve the problem, he explains to Book that Ratchet's actual name was Cassetti and that this case is connected to a prior one involving Colonel Armstrong, whose daughter Daisy was abducted and murdered by Cassetti. His expectant wife Sonia, who also passed away with the child, was shocked by the news. Armstrong wrote him a letter to ask for assistance, but it was too late, he had been discovered shot to death. Poirot believes the message alludes to the blood Daisy Armstrong had on Cassetti's hands. He asks Mrs. Hubbard again if she was aware of Daisy Armstrong's case, and she agrees that she did because it was a well-known one. Poirot recognizes the button as belonging to a security officer when the woman claims the visitor to her room dropped it. Poirot continues his inquiry by speaking with Mr. Masterman, Pilar Estravados, engineering professor Hardman, and Mr. Marquise, an Italian car dealer, but he comes up empty-handed. When he phones Mary, he inquires about Cassetti, but she is not really familiar with him. Poirot inquires about her connection with Dr. Arbuthnet after overhearing them speaking on the boat, but she makes no comment. When he quizzes Princess Dragomirov about the Armstrong case, she responds that she was a fan of Sonia Armstrong's mother, the great actress Linda Arden. Her goddaughter Daisy was also revealed to be by her. He claims Cassetti killed Daisy, but she counters that it may have been a coincidence. She says Poirot she saw a conductor last night, but it wasn't Michelle, the one assigned to their cabin. Poirot doesn't trust her, but asks quietly if he might speak to her assistant. He brings her and book with him after hearing this in hopes of finding the guard's uniform, which may be stashed someplace in the cabin, but instead discovers it in his own baggage. He informs Cassetti that his account information is missing as he and Book are reviewing the matter. They discover a man burning some documents while he is fleeing away from the train. When Poirot follows him, he realizes it's McQueen. Poirot accuses him of robbing Cassetti of money and claims that he murdered Cassetti and destroyed all of his papers to prevent anybody from learning about it. Mr. Aquin admits to robbing him of money, but he denies murdering him. Dr. Arbuthnet stops the inquiry to say that McQueen was with Cassetti the previous night and that he did not kill Cassetti. When asked about Mary, Arbuthnet replies that they met while traveling in a train convoy. Poirot becomes concerned after hearing Mary's denials. Poirot approaches McQueen once again and exposes details about his history, including the fact that his father presided over Armstrong's case. According to McQueen, his father was under pressure to pursue a destitute French woman named Suzanne since they lacked a suspect, but she committed suicide instead. The maid was innocent, and Cassetti had already left when the evidence pointed against him. They punished his father for it, but he was unable to aid him, so he chose to pursue a legal degree to be of assistance. Because of what happened to his father, Poirot accuses him of murdering Cassetti, but he denies it. Poirot discovers that Mrs. Hubbard had been stabbed in the back when he looks into the man after hearing someone screaming. The doctor saves her, but Poirot claims they won't discover a fingerprint since the murderer was attempting to get rid of the murder weapon. Poirot decides to interrogate them as well after having looked into everyone else save for Count Andrini and his wife. He discovers that she has changed her name from Helena to Elena, but she explains that she did so because she heard that Cassetti's room had a napkin with a H on it and they didn't want to get in trouble. She is his wife Sonia's sister, and he discovers that she is also implicated in Armstrong's case. She now abuses narcotics to cope with her loss. The engineer saves him as the Count kicks him out of the room out of anger, but Poirot quickly realizes the engineer is not who he claims to be. He acknowledges that he is a detective Cassetti hired to keep an eye on him while traveling when he confronts him. Poirot requests that he leave the gun behind and go after being unable to think of anything else. He invites Mary back the next morning and poses a few queries. Because she was Daisy's governess, he suspects her of killing Cassetti. He claims she killed Cassetti and then invited Helena to see it because she hoped it would lessen her pain and give her a chance to win back her buddy. Dr. Arbuthnet fires at him while he examines her and then admits to murdering Cassetti. 
He claims that Cassetti devastated him, and as a result, he intended to get retribution. John Armstrong was his best friend and his commander, who took him to medical school and provided for his future. He discovered Mary Wilde in mourning, and they were about to tell the police about him, but he killed Cassetti since he didn't deserve to go to trial, in his opinion. He also admits that he poisoned McQueen and altered the watch's time so that no one could determine the precise moment of death. Arbuthnet suddenly assaults Poirot when he is speaking with him, but Book comes and protects him. Poirot says it's time to solve the problem while the travelers wait in the tunnel. Because he was unable to even kill Dr. Arbuthnet, he claims that he is not the murderer. He explains to them that the Russian handkerchief they discovered with the letter H on it truly belonged to a princess by the name of Natalie Dragomirov. As she had previously worked as a cook at Armstrong's home, he also verifies that her helper was also involved. According to him, Pilar was in the room the night Cassetti kidnapped the infant. Masterman acknowledges their relationship and informs Armstrong that he served as both his valet and Batman while he was living in New York. He also learns that the maid who was wrongfully accused in the Armstrong case fell in love with the engineer. Poirot learns that Mrs. Hubbard is actually Linda Arden, who disguised her appearance to assist in the murder, and that Conductor Michel was the brother of Maid Sussain. He learns that Daisy's murder had an impact on every person in the cabin since they were all somehow related to Armstrong's family. He ultimately admits that they accomplished it jointly. Mrs. Hubbard acknowledges that it was her idea and that she had enlisted their assistance. She asks him to tell the police that she killed Cassetti alone after they killed him together and erased the evidence. She claims that they are all decent individuals who deserve another opportunity. Poirot wants them to murder him since he is unable to discern who is to blame in this case and cannot conceal the truth. Picking up the gun, Mrs. Hubbard decides to shoot herself instead, but she discovers the weapon is empty. Finally, he informs them that they are free to leave since he has notified the police that Cassetti was slain by an unidentified assailant. He exits the train and the officer questions him about himself. He replies that he must go to Egypt since a murder has occurred near the Nile. As the train pulls away with the rest of the passengers, he agrees to accompany him. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on future videos. Leave a like to support the channel.